Welcome back to Close Up. The Queen City, Manchester, is expected to be an epicenter of the COVID-19 pandemic when it reaches its peak here in the weeks ahead. Mayor Joyce Craig is leading the response efforts, but she is in self-isolation after her daughter tested positive for COVID-19. Here to discuss the impact of this disease on first responders is Manchester Fire Chief Dan Goonan. Chief, thanks for being yeah, here. Thanks for having me. And you uh, have been a police officer for a long time as well, yes. so you kind of get to wear both hats for us yeah, today and yeah. describe the, the totality of the response. So you know, being a first responder is so much more than just responding. Mm -hmm. Right there's a, a level of care that goes into everything, and you're dealing with people oftentimes at one of the darker moments or more dangerous moments mm -hmm. in their entire life. That often involves proximity, mm -hmm. uh, and that can't change in some right. cases. But now it has to in others. So, what are you telling your guys and gals as they go out there uh, to work? Uh, well, it just really all you can do here is just be careful. Um, you know, we we uh, try to keep our distances. We uh, wear. Uh, uh, PPEs, uh, masks if we have to, gloves. Um, you know, what we're doing right now is really treating everybody like, you know, it's COVID-19 uh, uh, positive. So uh, we got to keep our guys safe. It's uh, very important. Uh, if we start losing guys here, uh, we're certainly going to be in some serious trouble. So, um, yeah, we're taking as, as much precautions as we can. Um, there's certain protocols now uh, through dispatch uh, to identify people that possibly are COVID positive. So um, we're doing the best we can. And, uh, you know, life's going on and we're answering calls and we're going to fires and all the other stuff that we have to do. Uh, but uh, this certainly uh, has thrown us a curveball. Are you seeing more respiratory distress calls yet? Is that starting to climb? Just as it was coming in, you know, we were going to a respiratory distress call, and um, you know, in the past, you know, just I was commenting as I came in here. It's like, you know, when you went to a sick person call, it was one of those calls where, ah, do we have to go? Now you go to a sick person call, and you're saying, wow, you know, what could this be? Because people are getting ill out there, and um, yeah, I said we're doing our best to. Uh, uh, you know, provide the same service for people. Mm -hmm. in and this community. is such a different experience for everyone. You know, for you guys, um, there's always an element of danger involved. Mm -hmm. You know when you're going to that burning triple-decker, there's a potential your life is on the line. For a police officer, that standoff, you've got to have mm -hmm. that in the back of your yep. head. This is a little weird this time now, right? Yeah. Where every call yeah. is potentially one in which you could contract a fatal illness. Yeah, it's it's really weird. It's it's We're living in some crazy times, and we're living, like, you know, in history right now. Uh, so yeah, it's um, yeah, it's difficult, but you know we're we're all getting together and trying to make some uh, really um, some responsible decisions uh, for us, for the community, uh, for first responders, um, and you know we're trying to get on the same page. So it's it's it is different. I've been pretty much living in the EOC for the last month, uh, along with the mayor, uh, AMR, uh, police chief, um, uh, uh, health department. You know, it's it's a different time, but but it's very very fluid. Mm -hmm. What's happening now is very fluid. Never thought I'd be doing this as the as the you know the fire chief, but you know my my other hat is the emergency management director. So um, we've been we've been. Uh, it's it's funny you know we've been planning for these types of things for decades now. So we were. We were pretty ready, I think, as a community uh, to uh, you know, kick this off. We had the framework done. We had uh, sheltering plans done. So, uh, and we have great, uh, we have a great team, and we have uh, great community partners, including the hospital. So, what's your status on PPE right now? Our, our, yeah, our status how is things are in terms of supply and things. Yeah, like it's it's still a big issue. It's it's a very big issue, especially going forward. Um, uh, as as uh, as things change, like I said, it's very fluid. Um, as we get more direction from uh, the state, uh, our health director, uh, the CDC, um, you know, there seems like we're, there's going to be more need uh, for PPEs, and uh, certainly there's a shortage. What's going to happen if you end up with a firehouse uh, that has a COVID-19 cluster? Mm -hmm. How do you shift personnel to ensure that you're still going to have enough people to cover what's going on? Yeah, we're planning on that now. We we uh, may uh, shift to uh, one firehouse that uh, could be a quarantine firehouse. Uh, so we're, we're we're thinking about a whole lot of things. We're we're trying to stay a step ahead of this and plan. So we have plans for those types of things. Uh, quite frankly, we expect that uh, as things go forward. Uh, you know, the modeling um, is is frightening. Yeah, I can tell you that. Um, so we're preparing. Uh, you know, we're preparing for the worst and hoping for the best. Are there 
personnel you can draw on at all from, I know there's mutual aid is yeah. one thing, you yeah. can call those guys, yes. but if you need the people to be here, I guess, is that different or is this gonna be a typical mutual aid situation if there's a COVID-19 club? Yeah, I th we're all, you know, uh, we're constantly back and forth with the other fire chiefs in the area um, about mutual aid and how to make our uh, firehouses as safe as possible for our partners out there, but we really have to depend on each other in this time. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned uh, the slight uptick in respiratory distress calls. The potential exists in a couple of weeks with the advice that's been given to people saying essentially, don't come to the hospital unless you need to. Mm -hmm. Are you worried that you could see, you know, suddenly, you know, these calls coming in every 30 seconds mm -hmm. or so where people are saying, I need help, and yep. here you are just running around the city? Yeah, we are worried, and we, we're, like I said, the, the hospitals are, are great partners. They're planning uh, internal, you know, surge plans as well as we do have an alternate site uh, to uh, set up if they, if it does, uh, if it's needed. So um, those plans, uh, like I said, were, were put into place quite early. Uh, we ramped up our EOC quite early to get in front of this. I think we uh, recognize this as a community that uh, we're going to have to act fast, get in front of this. And, um, you know, it's, it's amazing what we have done in this community um, to plan uh, for what might happen. It's really, you know, I'm, I'm, sure I'm proud of our team and I think the, the community would be uh, very proud of if they knew exactly what was going on. It's, it's really amazing stuff to mm -hmm. me. That being said, what's your number one concern, your biggest worry right now? My biggest worry is uh, really, my, like I said before, the modeling and what this could be and how quickly it could ramp up. And if, you know, if we do, uh, you know, we're, we're planning right now for the worst and the hospitals are planning for the worst and we're all on the same page here. We're back and forth with the state all the time. It's, it's almost like the calm before the storm right now. And uh, that, that's what worries us the most. It's like, how big could this possibly get? Um, but, you know, I can tell you all the pieces that we could possibly put in uh, to, uh, to get in front of this we have already. There were some uh, dust-ups between the city and the state uh, last year. Yep. Um, this is obviously a different situation, yep. but how is that working relationship going right now between, say, the governor's office and uh, what's going on at the city level? Yeah, I think we're, we're all realizing that we have to be on the same team, and uh, we, uh, I can tell you right now that uh, we, we're back and forth um, through web EOC, so our, our EOCs are connected as well. Um, you know, I, I, I talk to uh, the Assistant Director of Safety quite often, or, you know, just to give updates. I talk to uh, um, the Fire Marshal. Uh, he's, he's been, uh, you know, promoted up into the middle of this. So we're, we're um, you know, we're, we're, contact, we're in contact all the time, back and forth. We have to be because uh, um, this is certainly, um, you know, over any community's pay grade. We to get on the same page and uh, when we talk to the state the state's talking to the CDC you know uh, we're talking to the hospitals the hospitals are coming together so we're doing the best we can how has safe stations changed through all of this obviously that was a close contact yeah. thing hey, what's different now as you deal with the people mm -hmm. struggling with addiction yep. coming in the door uh, safe station still open we're still op our doors are still open 24/7 uh, we're still making as many connections as we can uh, we're you know Safe station calls were always treated like a medical call. So when they come in the door, we're treating them like uh, a medical call. We're taking whatever precautions we can take, and we're still trying to connect people. And we'll connect people as long as uh, there's somewhere in, uh, somewhere to connect them to. All right, Chief Goonan from Manchester Fire Department. Okay. We appreciate your time and good luck out there. Thank you on very the front much. Lines. We'll check Anytime. in with you again. Anytime.